In this edition of Farming Live Australia, I'm going to show you our local railway system that's owned by the sugar mill. And it delivers the sugar to the mill and also takes the raw sugar out to the bulk sugar loading facility out at Lucinda. On the train there's two people generally, a driver and he stays in the cab at all times and another person and this is them here who changes the points on the railway tracks to direct the trains which railway track they have to go on and as well as another set of eyes to observe and tell the driver if there's anything going on. Because of the weight on these trains they take a fair bit of getting going and they take a fair bit of stopping as well. So they don't travel real fast at all and if you look here you'll notice that there's a lot of little bins now and you'll see a bigger one coming along. The little bins are the older style bins and they're being replaced with those bigger bins now and you'll see the trains pretty well up to full speed now and that's the brake mechanism again on the back of the train to help stop it. This will give you some idea how long this train is. I don't know how long it would be exactly but at least 500 metres. And here we are just arriving to the sugar mill. The distance from where that train started to this sugar mill is about 15 kilometres but the railway system goes much further than that. Once the train arrives at the sugar mill, they leave all the carriages in a shunting area and there's little trains that move them all around and organise the carriages how they want them to take them into the mill and actually tip the sugar cane out of the carriages. This is an overall view and you can see that the train tracks come into the mill, go around and then back out and, and there's sheds in the middle here where the carriages go into and they actually tip the sugar cane out of the carriages and then it goes up into the mill via a conveyor belt. This is a closer up view of the sheds where the sugar actually gets tipped out and you can see here and here the full carriages going in and you'll notice here empty ones coming out. After the sugar cane arrives in the shed where they tip the bins this is the actual process now. After this it'll go on a conveyor up into the mill to be crushed and go through the process of making the actual sugar. I'll just go through that process one more time. I really find this a really innovative way of getting the cane out. You know, you see it going on the road and you don't really think how do they get it out of there. I suppose you imagine they have some sort of a grab or something. The thing I find very interesting about these sugar mills is that they're really old and the basic process of making sugar hasn't changed. This big pipe is how they get the sugar from the mill over the road and to the facility that actually loads the sugar bins to take them out to the loading facility out at Lucinda. This is basically a huge funnel with doors on the bottom that are operated by hydraulics and they just open the lids of these sugar carriages up and pour the sugar in them till they're full then transport them out to the Lucinda bulk sugar loading facility. This is a close up view of what actually happens when they fill up these containers with sugar. So you can see the mechanism opens the door, the sugar flows in and when it's full the worker stops the process.
this is the train just arriving at the bulk sugar handling facility and you'll notice that the carriages are quite different from the ones that they use for the actual sugar cane they're enclosed with doors on top and obviously if it's raining or whatever they don't want water to get on the sugar these are the sheds where they store all the sugar before it goes on the conveyor out to the end of the wharf where they load it in bulk into the holds of the ships these sheds are huge I mean you just can't appreciate how big they really are this is a view of the sheds from the air and this will give you some idea how big the whole facility is it is just huge and it comes out of these sheds via conveyors gets weighed and then goes all the way out to the end of the six and a half kilometre long wharf to the facility on the end where they load it. If you look in this shot on the horizon, you can actually see what looks like hills. They're all islands, and that's the Palm Island group of islands north of Townsville. This is the end of the wharf here. Out on the end of this wharf is where they actually tie the ships up, where that bluer water is. And you could ask yourself, why would they make a wharf so long? You know, like, why wouldn't you just make it way shorter where it was a lot cheaper and easier to build that wharf well the reason is is because there's no depth of water right in where that wharf comes the water is is really shallow i mean there's not even enough water at times there to float a dinghy let alone a ship but out at the end the water's over 10 meters deep so there's plenty there for big ships out at the end I'd like to thank the staff at Wilmar Sugar for their help with information to make this video possible. That's about the end of this edition of Farming Live Australia. We'll see you next time.